So, yeah, hello everyone. My name is Milin Valke. Uh, I'm lead engineer at Visible Alpha, and I head the core engineering and infrastructure backend uh, teams there. So, uh, let me quickly walk you through what I call managing growth. Sometime in early 2017, we acquired a product named One Access. Now, the acquisition made a lot of business sense, but we faced a lot of technical challenges. Why? If you look at the technical stacks for Visible Alpha and One Access, you'll see that Visible Alpha is primarily using Python, whereas One Access was built on Microsoft technologies. One Access was also very heavy on using the database for stored procedures for computations. And the way One Access grew, it grew very rapidly. And the, at the pace at which it onboarded new brokers, data volumes shot up significantly. And we knew that very soon, we would not be able to scale this product. The third thing that was challenging was that the way the system had evolved, it was a fairly monolithic architecture. So it was very difficult to integrate these two into a single unified solution. Hence, the decision was taken to break down the architecture into a microservices-based architecture. Okay, next slide. OK, so microservices. Well, what does microservices really mean? So in a microservices world, each business functionality becomes its own independent service. These services expose a set of well-defined REST APIs to the external world, and the services communicate with each other through these REST APIs. How do you build these microservices? So we've used the Falcon framework. Uh, in case you haven't uh, looked at it, it's a web API framework for building microservices in Python. It's a very small and minimalistic framework. It doesn't do too much under the hood, but at the same time, it gives you flexibility to plug in stuff which you can use to you know, uh, expand it. And it encourages the REST architectural style. So hence, it was very well suited for our style of work. Once the Falcon application was built, we used GUnicon to run this application. So essentially, each service is essentially a GUnicon application running Falcon. What this does is it gives us a lot of flexibility because you can have multiple GUnicon processes running on multiple machines. And you can just scale up to whatever number you want. Microservices don't work in isolation. They need data to work with. So that's where we use SQL Alchemy. SQL Alchemy abstracts out the whole data access layer. And maybe there's a service that's very light on memory footprint, on data footprint. So it could just do it a SQL light DB. Whereas there may be some services that are very transactional in nature, hence you need a SQL server to handle them. SQL Alchemy allows us to abstract out the data layer so that different services can maintain their own databases and you don't have to worry about whom you're working with. Well, all this sounds very good, but there are obvious trade-offs that come with this. And that trade-off is monitoring. You have services running all over the place. If you don't do a good, good job at monitoring, it's not going to work. So what do, what do we use for monitoring? We have things like Nagios, CACT, we use the ELK stack, that's Elastic, Log, Stash, Kibana, right? These things help us to monitor the health of these services, which we can explain in more detail. Next, Abhijit. Yep, so um, I know we're running out of time, so I'll just quickly uh, go through the slide. You know, if any of you feel that you want to uh, get into the code a little more, Please do visit us at the booth. Uh, I can kind of, you know, uh, show this. In
check, check. Hello. As the services reg uh, come up, they register themselves with console. Console agents are running on each load in your network. And these console agents talk to each other. Using this, they build up a service registry. So any app, any service that wants, so if research service wants to know, okay, where is model service running? It can look up its console registry, figure out the IP port where the model service is running and get the data from there. And lastly, uh, what we've used is uh, kind of, uh, console is something that we're currently piloting. And the last thing that we're piloting on right now is the use of Docker. So what we want to do is each service uh, that comes up gets deployed into its own Docker container. So it gives us the flexibility of, you know, deploying it on any data center. We don't have dependencies on where uh, we want to deploy the service. Development framework also kind of, you know, gets significantly simplified. So, yep, so I think that's, that's pretty much, you know, all we wanted to say. Um, I have a slide uh, that talks about uh, how this is done, but again, I think in the interest of time, I'll just move over uh, and uh, we can we can take this up at the booth. So you're all welcome to kind of you know uh, reach out to us at the booth, and you know we'll be glad to address uh, any queries that you have. Thank you, everyone. So we'll start with the question arms. Any questions, please? Yeah. What was your number one most challenging, mm -hmm. like, thing that you encountered when you scaled? What was the number one challenging thing? Was it monitoring? Was it anything else? Um, so primarily, uh, when we were scaling up, the number one thing which we had to uh, factor in was the product that we had acquired, One Access. We had it heavily dependent on stored procedures to do computations. Now, what happens with that is every all your computations are kind of you know going down into one database box, and as your volume scale up, you really cannot have one box to it. So that's where the whole kind of, you know, re-architecting came into picture, where instead of doing the comp computation within the stored procedures, we move it out of the stored procedures, build services that do it, and scale the services. Yep. Right. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Any, any other questions?